Welcome back to the Buds in the Box YouTube channel. Today, we are reporting a trade from the Leafs that they have just made. They had literally just announced it about five minutes ago. We were hopping on to make the podcast, and we decided to make this trade video instead. So the Leafs have traded for Ryan Zingle and Ilya Labushkin. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, in exchange for Nick Ritchie and a third conditional pick, which is a third round pick in 2023, or they can choose to make it a second pick in 2025. So, boys, what are your initial thoughts on this trade? Well, I think it's like uh, they're trading for some depth, obviously, with the Zingle. It's more of um, he might not always be in the lineup. He's a decent player, but this year he's not doing great. Um, but he, he'll definitely be like, a you know, he can slot in on the fourth line because um, the third line is pretty set, the second line is pretty set, and obviously the first line is pretty set. So unless there's injuries, it's just like preparing, you know, it's like if Engvall gets injured or Simmons or Spezza gets injured or even Mikheyev, someone like that, right, in the bottom six, you've got someone you can bring in that's not like Alex Steves, right, who's played like one NHL game, right, or like Josh Hosang, who's never like, you know, played for the Leafs this year, like, you got like a guy who's an experienced NHL player who can come play um, and probably play a few games on the, at least on the fourth line. And then Labushkin, um, he's a big right-handed defenseman. I think he's big. Is, is he? Yeah, he's 6'2". Okay. So he's, you know, a good size right-handed defenseman that makes $1 million. So that's just, and he's, he's an offensive defenseman. So as long as he can play the game better than Justin Hall, I'm all I'm I'm all for him. And uh, they gave up a conditional pick, which whatever. Um, and Richie, who hasn't played a game since November, so I'm happy. Yeah, I think this was a uh, it, it was a good dump of the two guys we've more or less had been ripping on most of the year. Uh, kind of useless to say the least. Um, not really helping us out in many ways and, and Hall just we've been waiting for this and I mean this is hopefully Babushkin is his replacement and hopefully he can uh he can he can show his true colors and make sure that it uh that it is all Hall's fault and we're gonna well, be in first place next week I mean they might stick with Hall still like it's not for sure that they're gonna trade him or anything but they might just go with 8d like and scratch two guys every game mm. you know like this guy Labushkin is gonna have to like fight for a spot. Like Lilligren's in the lineup. He's not an everyday player yet, I don't think. I think he needs like one more year, but he, he'll be like in and out. Right. And then Hall, um, you know, he's and Dermot, right? So there's like guys that can go in and out, but they might trade Hall for a little bit of cap space. Yeah, I, that would I, make a lot of sense. And they just gained some cap space from this trade. So, yeah, I could definitely see that happening. Definitely trading Hall, maybe, maybe even package both together. Uh, at the start of the year, we really thought Hall was a valuable right handed defenseman because he was playing great with Muzzin and only costed us two million to the cap space. But as the season went on, I was a big fan of Hall and now I hate his guts. He is definitely becoming the Toronto scapegoat. And this trade, I think, gives them either either gives them two things. We either get a replacement for Hall, and we get a decent defenseman in Labushkin, or we give Hall some competition. Maybe you know, put some fire under his ass, get him going, and yeah. maybe something something just flicks and he gets back to his uh, his regular form. I mean, Labushkin in, or Labushkin has played uh, played decent this year. He's on the Arizona Coyotes, so. You know, you're not going to get – no one has a point per game. Even Keller has, like, seven points under point per game. But Labushkin has nine points. And if you compare it to someone like Jacob Chikrin, who's probably one – like, last year was one of the best defensemen in the league, only has two less points than Chikrin. So you're getting a defensive defenseman who's been playing really well this year. And, I mean, the headline was Dzingel, but I don't think we're the trade is really there for Dzingel. I think it's there to um, get our depth in our defense. And Dzingel's there just like as a Riley Nash – I think, yeah, I think um, also what it could do is just take Hall out of such an important um, spot on the team, a top four right hand. Like, he knows, like, 
and the Leafs know that like they really don't have another option there. Like right, like until this trade, he was kind of the only guy that could play in that spot because Riley and Brody are going to be the first pairing, right? And Lilligren's still young; he's not great enough. He's not, you know, he's not good enough to play in a top four role. So Hull is like, you know, he kind of is the only guy they could put there as a right-handed defenseman. Now they got another guy. You can take Hull out of all that penalty killing, out of all those situations, put him on the third pairing or scratch him, right? And just kind of let them fight for the spot, like whoever's playing better. Yeah, 100%. Well, yeah, that's that's basically it. That's all we have to say about this uh, this trade. Unless you guys have any other comments that you want to throw in before we end this video? No? Okay. I well, believe you won that trade, though. Yeah, yeah. I would it, say it's, it's a win. Win. Yeah. Um, Arizona is collecting picks, so maybe they're just, you know, they, they don't really care at this point. They're just offloading. So good, good trade by Dubis. Uh, I'm not complaining, but, I mean, we'll see how it turns out because we weren't complaining last year when they made some moves with to get Foligno and um, other players like, uh, was it Riddick? Riddick and uh, Nash, Hutton, and that turned I out was like shit. About Nash and Hutton. Oh. Uh, actually, I was just complaining about Nash, not so much yeah, Hutton. Like Hutton. Nash. Hutton is a little, Hutton was fine. He was a depth defenseman in case one of the D got injured. He really didn't do anything wrong. Riley Nash was so overhyped, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Even you, like you guys, were like, he's so good defensively, all this stuff, like, and he's so good at winning draws and shit. Like, no, nah, he's, he, I never thought he was any good. Like, and I was, I was mad about that from the beginning and he just didn't do anything. It was I mean, no he was like sought out him. to be like this defensive defenseman, like, like kind of like uh camp for Kasha, like how they're playing. Like they are playing their roles perfectly. They are what we expected him to be. And I guess he just didn't fit the role. He didn't fit the lineup and he did absolutely nothing. He was invisible the entire. And he was also injury prone. Yeah. Dubis loves to trade for injury prone guys. So mm. hopefully Dezingle and Lebushkin are, are not made of class. Did he just come off an injury? Who did? Dezingle? Did he? Yeah. He, does. He, did. <laughs> he loves it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Whatever. Dezingle, he's a left winger. He'll, you know, he'll fit in on, on, he has the single berries. <laughs> <laughs> He'll fit on, on the, the on the meme. left wing somewhere, probably in the fourth line. So we get another meme to Toronto. That's all we care about. Exactly. <laughs> all right, that'll do it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, make sure you guys share this video just to let all your friends and family know that the Leafs have actually done something and made a trade. This has been the Buds in the Box YouTube channel. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new, like this video, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.